Hi, this is Amy, and this afternoon we're going to look at how to use the new version of Fluberu and get the most out of it. Um, we're going to come at this from the perspective that you're using a Google Apps for Education domain, but I'll also share with you how to do this if you just have a Gmail account. So the purpose of Fluberu is to have self-grading quizzes. So let's create a form. That's our first step. So we're going to go to our Google Drive, drive.google.com, and we're going to go to Create and Form. Now if you're using a Google Apps for Education domain, you're going to see some options up at the top. I'm just choosing a, a theme here, so you should do the same. Go ahead and open up a new window and choose a theme. I can't quite show you the bottom of this um, dialog right here, but all you have to do is just click the theme that you like and then click OK at the bottom. So now we're going to scroll all the way up to the top of our form and you can see that my domain is Huntsville ISD. So if I'm setting this up for a quiz for students inside my doma domain, I'm going to check mark both these boxes because I'm going to get the form to automatically record the student's information to cut down on cheating. But I'm going to pretend with you today that you don't see these settings um, so that you can't choose those options because if you're just using a Gmail account you won't see those at all. But know that's what they're for and should be used if you have them. So let's name our quiz. I'm just going to click up here where it says Untitled Form and I'm just going to call it Sample Quiz. And we'll click OK. And now our first question goes right here and all of our questions are going to be multiple choice um, except for the first two which in our example we're going to use to identify the student. So I'm going to ask my students their last name and that's going to be a text question. Now I'm going to duplicate this question and I'll put in first name and that's also going to be required and then I'm going to create a new item which is also going to be a text question and it's going to be email address. And I'm going to remind my students please put your entire email address um, to receive your grade. And let me spell receive correctly. And this will be a text and it will also be required. So now I can add some multiple choice items so that I can um, you know do the quiz. So our first question I'll type it right here and uh, and then I'll resume the video. Alright so I've added some answer choices here and um, I'm gonna make that question required and I'm gonna add one more question to my quiz my sample quiz and then we'll move on. Let's go ahead and on, on this question, let's make it about a picture. So let's go ahead and do an add item and we'll put in an image and then we'll ask a question about the image. So we'll just click the box. Let me show you how I did that. We'll just add item and choose image and then we'll choose a picture to upload. And I think I've got one right here on my desktop. Let me see, this might be too big, but let me try it. Here, let me do the 800 pixel one and then we'll ask a question about the picture. Alright, so um, we'll call it grades and learning and uh, we'll put that in the hover text too and then our next question we'll do done so there's our image and then we'll add an item and we'll make it a multiple choice and uh, we'll put that underneath the picture. All right, so we've typed another question and some multiple choice answer choices. And let's go ahead and click Done. And then we're going to check out these um, choices at the bottom of the form. So the top choice says, Show link to submit another response. Now, you might want to use that because if you don't have a lot of devices in your classroom and you're going to have your students pass around devices to answer a quiz, then you might want that link to show. But if every student is going to take this quiz you know, on their own device, then you don't want that to show. You probably do not want to publish and show a link to the results of the form. That shows everybody what everybody else put and you probably don't want to let people edit their responses after submitting, but that's all up to you. 
At the bottom you're going to see a link that says send form and you also see that in the top right. Um, but we're going to go ahead and do this a different way because I'm going to presume that you've got your students uh, in class and you want them to take the quiz right now. So let's see how we could do it that way. So we're going to go to view live form and here's our quiz. So let's now share this with our students live. So what I've got installed up here, it's an extension from the Chrome Web Store. You can get to that through the new tab and then the store. And it's called the bit.ly bit .bit extension. I really like this one. I just found it last week and I'm just really liking it because I can click it. I'm going to go to save bitmark and I can edit this and I can make this a customized link. So I'm going to call this Goo Quiz and hit enter on my keyboard to oh, see if that's already taken. So um, I'm going to call it Goo Quiz Mayor. Let's see if that's taken. All right, that's available. And now I can have my students type this in bit.ly forward slash goo quiz mayor and people can actually take this quiz. So that's a bonus. But what we're going to do right now is we're going to take this as a, a couple of people so that we can grade it. First of all, you as the teacher, you're going to take the quiz so that uh, so that you have the correct answers in there to use as a key. So you take it first. Um, the, the correct answer is going to be everything Google Forms is amazing and the correct answer on this one is that grades without other accompanying feedback are not good for learning. So I'm going to submit, there's my key and now I'm going to take my own quiz again by going back to view the live form so that I can show you how to grade it. So I'm going to take it a couple of times and I'm just going to put in some fake information and then I'll submit it. All right, I've taken my quiz three times so that I can show you how to do this. And the first time is going to be the key. But now what we need to do is go back to our editable quiz. And I'm going to go to view responses. Now, if you haven't ever done this before, you're going to see some choices. If I were you, I would choose create a new spreadsheet with the data. So here we are. Here are our, all of our answers. And now we're going to grade the quiz. So you have to do this each time you make a new quiz. So let's first of all, let's name it so that we know what this is. This is sample quiz for our example. And now I'm going to go to insert, insert, and all the way at the bottom it says script. I know you can't see that on my video. Sorry about that. This HD format's so narrow. But insert and right below drawing it says script and that's what we're going to choose. And now we'll search for Flubaru. And here it is. We'll install it into our spreadsheet. We've installed it now. And we're probably going to have to go to grade assignment twice because we'll have to OK some permissions. Uh, so when you do it, you may see some permissions that you need to say OK to. Go ahead and do that and then come back again and go to Flubaru grade assignment. All right, it's going to ask me to authorize it too. Good, so you can see what it looks like. I'm going to choose the account that I'm logged into right now. Click Accept. All right, now let's try it again. Flubaru Grade Assignment. All right, step one. What do the columns mean that we've got um, chosen in Flubaru? Well, the first one does identify the student. The second one identifies the student. Actually, this one is null. I'm not sure why it put that in there. We don't need that. Um, it's There's nothing in that column. And email address also identifies the student. And we'll ask for one point for each of our questions. And then we'll scroll down to the bottom of that dialog and click continue. All right, now we w it wants to know which one should be used as the answer key. Well, it's actually this one right here because this is when I took it. There's my name. So I'll click continue again at the bottom of the dialog. And now Flubaru is grading my two students who have taken the assignment. So now let's view the grades. And there we are. We've got um, Jerry Seinfeld who made a 50 and Kramer who did not do so well made a zero. Alright so now let's try out the email grades function 
and see how this script works. So the email address question is email address. We'll include a list of questions and scores. Let's go ahead and include an answer key. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go take it another time with an email address that works so we can see what the email looks like. So hold on just a minute while I do that. All right, so I took the quiz a third time as Annie and then regraded um, my student submissions. I just went back to Fluberoo and I chose regrade assignment and now I'm going to email the grade so that we can see what that email looks like when it comes through on the other side. So this is correct. Email address question is email address and then um, I'll include both of these so we can see what it looks like and uh, then I can include a message to my students right down here. So I'll type um, retakes are tomorrow at 3.30 if you need one. And now I'll click continue at the bottom of the dialog again. And then we've got three grades emailed. Let's see what that email looks like. All right, so here we are and here's our email from Fluberoo and um, I didn't do so well. I got one point out of two, so that's a 50. Retakes are tomorrow at 3.30 though, so good news for me. And here we are, what's your favorite feature? I got correct. And what's the best paraphrase? It's incorrect. So I think this is just really beautiful, really amazing that you can generate these for your students automatically. So I hope that that helps you learn how to use Fluberoo. Um, it, is, it is a really cool feature that you can use with Google Forms. Have a great day. Bye-bye.